Hey guys, David from the Roller Coaster Project. In this episode, we're going to be going through a few updates, and of course, you can see behind me, we're tracking the roller coaster. We're going to go through how I've done it, uh, how they kind of do it, and some other problems I was running into. Welcome to the Roller Coaster Project. Okay. So, big update. Videos might be on a temporary hiatus coming up. I'm actually moving up north. Uh, some of you know that I live in Georgia and I recently accepted a position up in the Ohio area. So I'm gonna try to document that as best I can. Uh, I'll be moving uh, this weekend actually coming up, so I'll try to have a little video as I go up there. Um, and then I'm gonna try to put all of the machinery and everything um, pretty much inside of the apartment I'm gonna be living in before moving to a house. Uh, but other than that, let's get right into it. And as you can see behind me, of course, this is what I've been working on. If you've been following along on our Instagram page, you found it as well. Right now, we've been tracking the roller coaster. And the track is made up of the 10 laminates for this ride, usually eight for the real thing, but 10 laminates and then anchor bolts holding them all together, and then some, of course, cross bracing. Um, for this ride, it was very much the same. As you can see behind me, there's some uh, miniature DeWalt wood clamps, and that's actually holding the wood down as it secures. I'm using a, an adhesive. They usually use nails in the, in the real world, but the adhesive I'm using is a liquid nails wood glue, um, something to simulate kind of the shear that would be involved with uh, the nails. After that, as we start to go to a curve out of the station, this is the station area, as it comes out of the station, it slopes down another three degrees. And because of that, I had to clamp. I started using uh, binder clamps, um, binder clips, and then it, it they, didn't, they worked okay. Uh, but then I noticed because it got wider and wider, this being 10 sixteenths thick, uh, 0.625, yes, 0.625, from that, I needed to use something a little bit stronger. Now these only hold about 35 pounds, but that's enough to keep everything in place. And then what I did to finish up, um, once you get it relatively close to based on where the center line is going to be on the ride, this is all marked out on the supports, what I did was then I followed along with the Dremel tool and then I checked the gauge and then I sanded the edges to make sure that they're nice and uniform and smooth. Something that I actually have to update on the, the car itself, um, minded that this was the prototype, this car, the uh, undertrack wheels, the little axle that holds them in, protrudes a little too far. So it's actually scraping the inside underneath the track. And I need to machine this down um, or turn it down to as thin as possible without it breaking apart while it rolls. Keep in mind that the under track wheels are only there to kind of help it from lifting off. Um, other than that, it does mount on fairly well and it does actually start rolling by itself and it fits just as designed since the ride itself. So now you notice it stopped and that's because it actually rubbed on the inside. So, but once I uh, turn those down, they're not going to touch anything and they're just going to go by themselves. And that's how it should be out of the station. As soon as you release the brake, everything rolls. The thing that I'm, I'm, I ran into a few problems with is how to do the actual turn. And I thought about the real rides, how they offset wider pieces of wood, uh, offset the laminates. I made them a little bit closer to the center line and everything's marked from the center. So what I'm going to do is get just a normal compass and mark out little lines where the curve should follow on each uh, ledger, on each bent, on each support. Once we get down to the turn, the clamps are actually on the turn portion. And as of now, you saw the straight sections. Those are relatively simple. But by doing it this way and marking from the center line of the ride, it makes it a lot easier. Now that beam compass that I came up with, uh, that little tool I thought I was so proud of, it's a good idea, but it didn't really work for this. And honestly, because the ride is going to be pushing the outer rail every time, it's going to, you know, since there's a tolerance, it has some wiggle room. It was easier for me to just put some offsets and sand it down. And then when I get it really close, then go in by hand and make sure that it's accurate. All the while you take a, a guide car or the front car and you see how the gauge kind of fits within. If it's too tight, if it needs to be loosened up, all of that gets, uh, you know, tweaked and determined once the ride is almost fully built. Um, and then it's just going to go through progression. So hopefully I'm not looking for too much of a hiatus once I get into Ohio, but I'm definitely going to have more updates. Uh, the chain lift, 
the chains, the sprockets, everything's been designed. Um, that will definitely be coming up, but it requires some milling. And, you know, it, it stinks to have to put that aside, but, you know, moving into this new job is going to be, it's going to be great. And then, of course, it'll give me a lot more free time to do this when I'm not in my friend's garage. Uh, but as always, guys, thanks for following along. Comment below. Thank you for the comments about what to do with the lathe if I wanted to convert it to CNC. I might do that. I'm going to try a few things first. Um, see what I can do to kind of get some better accuracy out of it. Maybe tighten up the Gibbs or whatever. Um, you know, comment below, subscribe to the page, and then if you know of anybody who's interested in roller coasters, you know, tell them about it. Um, as always, thank you for following along, and I'll update you guys soon. Thanks.